So I decided to record a video for all of the artists right now who are struggling to stay motivated in these unprecedented times. I've noticed that a lot of the people that I follow on Twitter at the moment are just having an absolute nightmare of a time focusing. A lot of them are saying that because of everything that's happening in the world right now they just can't bring themselves to do their work and they also feel like it's inappropriate to post their work and that's definitely something I want to address shortly. Uh, I'm just kind of making an unscripted rant at the moment because I feel incredibly frustrated and I just need to rant honestly, so I'll get into that. The creature I drew for this video is called Whistling Unicorn and it's from my upcoming webcomic The Increasingly Absurd Endeavours of Gretchen Goosander. It's a small type of unicorn that uses its horn to create complex whistling sounds to communicate with fellow unicorns and it can also use its horn as a snorkel when it's under the water's surface. I'm using lots of bright colours here and I'm drawing a lovely peaceful forest scenery because this is the kind of thing I like to draw when I'm feeling stressed and when I need to just do something for comfort. So, regarding the title of this video, how do you stay motivated with art when the world is collapsing? Well, I'm going to try my best to answer that question, but for now I think I'm going to have to talk a, bit, a little bit about my perspective first. To say that 2020 has been an absolute shit show would be an understatement. This has been the most difficult year that any of us have ever had to go through. For me, it started off with my neighbourhood being flooded after the local river burst its banks, and that was terrifying. Then we had the pandemic, which is still going on months later, which is directly a result of it being horribly mismanaged by both the UK and USA governments. Then we had the tragic murder of George Floyd and the consequent explosion, the global explosion of protests against systemic racism which have finally brought this to the forefront of the global conversation. And then on top of that we had JK Rowling coming out with some horribly transphobic and very ill-informed statements. And let's not forget, on top of all this, we're still having to deal with the existential horror of the coming climate apocalypse. Scientists are working tirelessly to make sure that the number of deaths doesn't exceed millions into billions. This is the stage we're at. And on top of that, we still have the looming threat of Brexit here in the UK. It just feels like everything is collapsing. The economy is collapsing. The climate is collapsing. Just everything is collapsing right now and it's terrifying. I'm so scared. Everyone is scared. For me personally, this is an absolute nightmare to have to deal with. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I have autism and even on a normal day I have a real problem concentrating. But in order to try and cope with these feelings of not being able to actually do anything about my situation, you know, I've been retweeting a lot of information about Black Lives Matter and trans rights and yeah I know, hashtag slacktivism, but you know, just to do whatever I can to help and this has brought about another problem and Another, a few other artists, uh, friends that I follow on Twitter have complained about uh, this as well, where when we started retweeting stuff about Black Lives Matter, we started basically pissing away followers and this, this really rubbed me the wrong way because I thought to myself, you know, this isn't just some debatable political uh, opinion or anything. You know, everybody should be against racism. Everybody should support things like trans rights and, you know, LGBT rights in general. Because, you know, these are just basic human rights and the fact that I've been losing followers over it has been just really, really frustrating me. However, I decided to take a step back and have a think about why would people want to unfollow me over this? And because of the way things are right now, I think people just want to not think about politics and not think about the situation of the world and people tend to follow artists just for their art. Sometimes people follow artists for their art and their personality and their opinions but for the most part the reason you follow an artist is primarily for their art and I think a lot of people get afraid when artists diverge into something else. I can understand this. It is still frustrating but I can at least understand this. But I think there is a bit of a worrying trend going on in artist communities of kind of this performative positivity. Now I want to make a distinction here between performative positivity and actual positivity because 
Artists like Lois have been extremely positive throughout all of this. She's just amazing, by the way. Lois is amazing. She has been using her platform to share so much information about Black Lives Matter, and I am so happy with her for doing that. You should go follow go follow Lois if you don't already. I mean, you probably do follow Lois because she's huge. But yeah, this is exactly what I mean when I say actual positivity over performative positivity. Large artists using their platform to boost the voices of the unheard, instead of worrying about tarnishing their reputation as an apolitical artist and, and potentially annoying a small amount of their fan base. This was a pretty big feature of the pandemic actually, uh, seeing larger artists helping out smaller artists who are struggling by making art share threads and sharing free resources to ensure that all of the artists who had had conventions cancelled and were now struggling and, and because of losing clients, uh, these larger artists were, make, were reaching out to them. And that's definitely what I would call actual positivity, because the problem with performative positivity, and I'm, com I'm actually coming from a place of uh, experience here, because I did this to an extent when uh, I was trying to uh, launch my freelancing career, when I made a channel trailer that had nothing to do with what I actually like to do, and a lot of people smelt that immediately and they were very upset by the fact that it was it almost seemed completely insincere you know when love the dogs you know fucking meant something and then you have this trailer that just feels completely fake and insincere and that's why I eventually deleted the trailer I am absolutely guilty of this performative positivity thing and I, I think capitalism definitely pushes people to be positive in a very false kind of to put on this mask and I think a lot of artists hate having to do this and right now is an excuse to not have to do this anymore so you know just don't just help people just boost their voices if you can and of course I'm not having a go at people here who are maybe keeping out of this because because maybe you suffer from anxiety or other mental health problems and you prefer to try and keep away from topics like this because it, it affects you. I completely sympathise with those people and I completely understand why these people might do things like take a break from Twitter or not talk about it so I'm not talking about these people either. But anyway, if the prospect of losing followers is part of the reason as to why you're losing motivation, just remember you know, you don't need to worry about losing those those kinds of followers because those probably aren't the kind of people you want following you anyway. And uh, just one final footnote while I'm here actually, I've also seen the argument that artists don't want to jump on the bandwagon with regards to what's been happening and to that I would say if you're getting involved in a human rights cause it's not jumping on a bandwagon. We all have to be talking about this and the more people talk about this the better. Now I do recognise that there probably are some artists who are kind of doing it to jump on the bandwagon and if that is the case then and please stop, you know, just, you need to really care about these situations. Don't do it just because it's trendy. Do it because it is, these are human rights violations. Do it because these are concerns that genuinely worry you, pushing for human rights and for pushing for a better world at the end of the day. Anyway, I'm really sorry for going off on a tangent there, but it was important for me to bring up because this is one of the reasons as to why artists have been getting increasingly unmotivated. Okay, so I'm going to start talking now about motivational tips for getting yourself motivated with art even if the world is completely falling apart around you. So my first tip would be remind yourself of why you became a creative in the first place. I had a bit of a crisis recently and it made me rethink everything I was doing with my art. I've been working extremely hard to get into the industry for the last two years and I've noticed that my art has been losing a lot of its personality and it just doesn't really feel like my art anymore and the lengths I've been going to to try and improve my art to industry standard has been it's had a very negative effect on my mental health and I realised I just can't do this anymore. Even if I do manage to get into the industry, I'm probably going to be so mentally fucked that I won't be able to do my job anyway. Now don't get me wrong, I'm still doing private commissions for because I am a freelancer and I do have to make a living. But I've stopped actively pursuing industry work, I've stopped putting out emails, I've stopped um, applying to jobs, I've stopped looking for agencies because I've just been rejected so many times at this point and I've been told by a lot of pro artists that, you know, rejection's just a part of it, it takes a long time to get into the industry, you know, it's just all part of it and, you know, that's absolutely fine but when you take into account the tiny fact that we have less than 10 years left to make unprecedented changes to our carbon emissions to prevent irreversible damage to the climate, 
then it kind of makes you wonder why you would want to spend five to ten years trying to get into the industry. Do you get what I mean? So I remember when I was a young teenager and I started getting into Studio Ghibli films and I remember the first time I saw Spirited Away and the first time I saw Princess Mononoke, which by the way is my favourite film of all time. I absolutely love that film and I remember thinking, I want to do that, you know, I want to do that. And I was just so inspired and that's what set me off on my journey to, you know, wanting to become a, an, an animation film director. I had some very high hopes back then and over the years I got more and more and more um, jaded and I started to realise, well, Hayao Miyazaki is a completely different person for me in a completely different situation. I can't do what he's doing, I can only do what I'm doing. And that's what I was thinking about my webcomic. Why don't I be the Hayao Miyazaki of my own webcomic if it's the only thing I can do as an autistic? Because believe me, my autism really gets in the way. I have tried to work around this condition so bloody much and Oh, it's been it's been so difficult. I've come to accept what my limits are and I've come to, you know, be honest with myself about this. But anyway, continuing on, I thought I want to be the master of this webcomic because I want to put my all into it because this is what I really want to do. This is what I really want to pursue. I don't I only want to get into the industry because it's more financially viable than doing a webcomic. A webcomic is not the most financially viable thing, but bugger it. Just bugger it. The world is going to shit. Why not? I might as well do this. It could be an absolute disaster, but what choice do I have at this point? I might as well. I just love this webcomic. I love doing it so much. I'm, I'm fascinated by the characters. I'm fascinated by the creatures. And it reminded me of when I was younger and when I was starry eyed and, you know, watching Studio Ghibli films and thinking, wow, I love these worlds. And when I work on my webcomic, that's what I want to do. I don't want to produce work for other people. I want to produce work for me. And I want other people to enjoy my creations. I want, I want to inspire people. I want to change the world. And that is fundamentally what made me realize that's where I had a change of attitude and sort of a light, that light switch moment of, you know, this is what I should be doing. It's probably an absolutely terrible idea, but this is the perfect time for it. So the takeaway from this story is look back to what inspired you in the first place, be it f a film, a video game, a place, uh, a book, just anything. Whatever triggers those memories of when you were young and just doing art because you enjoyed it. So my next motivational tip would be tie your art to a higher purpose. Now what do I mean by that exactly? Well, if there's a topic you're particularly interested in right now or you want to feel like your art is actually making a difference in the world, try and tie in whatever politics or human rights you believe in, in directly into your work. So maybe use your work to promote something you believe in, like, or maybe do work that supports a charity or for me personally, I'm tying my politics directly into my story. I'm, I'm weaving the, my um, beliefs into the narrative of the Gretchen Gusandi universe. There's going to be a lot of themes of environmentalism, there's going to be a lot of themes of animal rights, of human rights. Just generally speaking, I want to, I want to hopefully teach people about things that I feel are important. This is also a really good and healthy way to process current events. Historically, art has imitated and art has taken inspiration from whatever fears have existed in a society at the time or whatever beliefs and attitudes there have been. And I think that if the world feels completely insane, if it feels completely out of control, it's a really good thing to find a way to work that into your art and use your art to make sense of it. So here is my third and final tip. Draw if it's absolutely necessary. Don't force yourself to work if you can't. Do not feel obliged to work if you absolutely can't. Self-care is so important right now. Looking after yourself is so important right now. You're not gonna be able to produce your best work anyway if you don't look after yourself. Do not listen to anybody who says things like post every day, or work 16 hours a day, or get up at four o'clock in the morning. Just don't. Only do the work that's necessary for your survival. 
You know, if it's work that makes you feel good, if it's therapeutic to you, absolutely do it. If it's your job, then you don't really have a choice. You're just going to have to do the absolute bare minimum of work. You know, just please put self-care first for now. And, you know, make sure that any work that you do that's optional or like studies or anything, make sure it's fun. Make sure you're enjoying yourself because if you're not enjoying yourself right now, if your art is just making you miserable and you're just writhing around in imposter syndrome and self-loathing and feelings of spite because your art teacher told you that your art is horrible and you're a horrible person, you know, if you're, if you're drowning yourself in negativity, it's not going to help you produce your best work. I get that some people are actually motivated by things like spite, some people are motivated by jealousy, you know, I don't... I was for the longest time kind of motivated by some pretty negative emotions, but then I had to stop doing it because it was actually starting to ruin my art. And that do, you do hit a wall eventually and you do get extremely burnt out eventually. But like I said, just draw because it's necessary. Don't draw, don't force yourself, and don't drown yourself in feelings of guilt if you can't. Please, for the love of God, do not drown yourself in guilt if you cannot work. Please, I am begging you. This is not a normal situation. This is like unprecedented times right now. If you cannot work, if you cannot bring yourself to draw, please don't beat yourself up over it. It's not your fault. It's completely rational to be feeling this way right now. These are normal feelings. The anxiety, the depression, the anger, the frustration. If you're feeling all of this, it's normal, it's healthy, and it's human. There is nothing wrong with you. Just because people are able to work right now does not mean that you're the problem. In fact, do you know how a lot of these pro artists stay so focused? It's because they literally have to ignore everything that's going on right now. I mean, for sure, that's a great thing when, you know, the world isn't completely falling apart, but this is not the time to be doing that. We should be paying attention to what's happening in the world right now. I do not want to hear any excuses. I know that, you know, being a high performer means absolutely hyper-focusing on, you know, your one skill, but this... This is the exception now. Things have really gone off the deep end and we absolutely should not, we should not ignore this. It's not healthy to ignore what's happening in the world right now. Again, this is why I'm tying all of this into my art. This is why my work is going to have its own environmental messages and messages about human rights and animal rights because I I mean I know it's a fantasy comic but again you can tie these messages into um, fantasy work if you use nuance and if you know how to write characters properly. Uh, I definitely want to make a, another video about that someday because I feel like I've got lots, a lot to say about that but yeah don't don't just put on the existential blinkers. Be aware that all this is happening and it's horrible and it's terrifying. And if you feel like utter shit right now, it's perfectly human and it's perfectly normal. In fact, maybe use that. Maybe use all of that anger to fuel your work. Use those feelings of frustration. That's what I'm doing. And if you really, really, really want to draw, but you just can't do it and you can't think of anything to draw right now, and maybe you're just want, you're just getting into art or something, and but you don't know where to start. Here's my recommendation: draw the weirdest thing you can. Like just think of something really strange, really bizarre. Maybe a, a, a bear that's like half television, and it has chicken nugget brains and Barbie dolls for eyes. I don't know. Just the weirdest thing you can possibly think of. Why Barbie dolls for eyes? I don't know. But. Try drawing just the weirdest things you can and fill, fill up a few sketchbook pages with just weird stuff. Because why not? Anything goes. The world's falling apart. Draw anything. If it helps you get into the flow of just drawing, just do it. It doesn't have to be good. Like, why the hell should we care about whether drawings are, are good or bad or anything right now? I mean, obviously, if you want to work in a specific industry, your work has to be to a specific standard. But if you're just, like, getting into drawing, just have fun with it, please. Don't make yourself any more miserable than you already are. Because we're all miserable right now. We all feel like shit. We all need to do whatever we can to alleviate these feelings of hopelessness and helplessness. 
I think that's actually the beautiful thing about art. It's anarchic by nature. You can create whatever you want when you exist within a world where you have almost no control over your life, where everything just keeps getting worse and worse and everything keeps going wrong for you. You have this one thing where you have absolute 100% control. Oh, and of course, when it comes to self-care, I have one very important tip. Stop doom scrolling on Twitter. Oh, and that's another thing. It's really important to save the victories that we do have. Things like the Supreme Court recently ruling to protect LGBT plus rights in the workplace. You know, just victories like that, savour them. Progress is being made and more progress will be made the more people push for it. But like I said before, nothing is normal right now. It's never going to be normal again. Things are only going to get worse from here. I know you don't want to hear that and I don't want to believe it either. I, I wish I could just shut the entire world off and just focus on my art. But it has gone way beyond that point now. It's gone... I don't think... I think even a lot of like the professional high-end artists are struggling now. I've seen posts even from like friends of mine who are actually, you know, in the industry. They do things like Magic the Gathering art and they just can't stay focused. They are struggling. They are depressed. They are wishing they could just see their friends. In fact, I think uh, somebody posted recently um, about how they just wish they had time to build a social life. So many artists just don't have a social life and they're all alone and I don't think this is just all oh, the way it is for artists. I genuinely think this is unnatural and unhealthy. I think something has gone wrong here and I think it's not just exclusive to the art world, it's everyone. This this manufactured loneliness, this... It doesn't have to be this way, it really doesn't, but it is at the moment, and hopefully things will change. I'm going to push for that change, of course, and I'm going to try and use my work to do that, but like I said, just don't beat yourself up, okay? Take care of yourself. Put yourself first for once. It's not selfish to look after yourself. It's not selfish to to love yourself and to take time off when you need it. Anyway, that's everything I have to say for now. I hope that this video helps at least somebody in my audience get motivated. And remember, please put self-care first. Also, if you like the work that I do, please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel or following me on social media. I've put links into the description to my different social media accounts. Take care.